Hey everyone, it's Bradley Bush with another algebra video for you. Today we're talking about factoring, the difference of squares. Thanks for coming to my channel. If this is your first time, welcome. I'm thrilled you're here. If you're returning, thanks so much for coming back. If you enjoy it, please consider subscribing. Hit the like button and leave a comment. So factoring the difference of squares, this is really all it comes down to. When we say difference of squares, the difference refers to the negative in between the two quantities. So you're subtracting two things. And the squared part in difference of squares refers to both of the items, something minus something. Both of those somethings are squared. And you can see the squares here. So the first something we will just call A. The second something we call b. So we have a squared minus b squared. So you're taking the difference or subtracting two squared terms. So you recognize this pattern. And what you want to do is you want to identify the a and the b. Once you have the a and the b identified, you're set. You're actually ready to go. Because literally all you do after that is you plug in the a into the first term of the factor form and you plug the b into the second term of the factored form and you're done you've totally factored it so these can actually go pretty quickly if you learn to identify the a and the b so if i give you an example and i say factor this and i say it's x squared minus 100 well you probably have already thought hey well the a in our or the first something squared is x so you say there we go the a is x well what about the b well 10 or <laughs> that was a 14 slip 100 can we turn 100 into something squared yeah because 10 squared is 100 so we have now found b so a is x and b is 10. The negative is just part of the formula, so we don't even worry about that. So now we have a minus b, a plus b. So we know a is x, right? So we're going to put an, an x in the first spot of the first binomial and the first spot of the second binomial. We have a negative and a positive, and then we would just plop in B. B is 10. So we put 10 both spots. So x squared minus 100 can factor into x minus 10 quantity times the quantity x plus 10. And that's it. We're done. There was a lot of explanation there, but once you catch the, catch on to what's going on, you see the pattern, it will go really quickly. So let's do a few examples here. And remember, we may have to factor out the greatest common factor before we find the difference of squares. So first of all, let's start out and say, can we see something squared minus something else squared? Well, we can. x squared is obviously x quantity squared. And 144? That looks pretty much like 12 squared. So we've identified our b and we've identified our a. So we can literally just write out the, the factoring, which is x minus 12 times x plus 12. Done. Next one, let's do b. This is 64x squared minus 81y squared. And again, we look at it and we say, well, can we rewrite this as something squared minus something else squared and as we're looking at it 64 that's 8 squared and then x squared is just x squared so our a then is 8x how about our b 81 is 9 squared and y squared is just y squared so our b then is 9y we've found our a and our b so we literally again we're just plugging in the information so 
8x minus 9y and 8x plus 9y. You rewrite that first 9. Looks a little bit not. Looks like it needs a little bit of help. Let's do C. So C is 27x squared y minus 75z squared y. Hmm. Let's see if we can plot a common factor here first before we start because it looks a little a little sketchy. 27 is 9 times 3. Um, 75, hey, 3 times 25. 9 is a square, perfect square, and 25 is a perfect square. So let's pull out the 3. And um, they both have a y. Look at that. We have x squared y and z squared y. So let's pull out that y. So we're going to pull out a 3y first. And what we're left with is... 9y 9x squared minus 25z squared. And this we can work with, right? We have 3y times 9x squared minus 25z squared. And we can make the 9 we can make this look like something squared minus something squared because we have um, 3x quantity squared and 5z quantity squared. And we're subtracting the two, right? So we found our a, which is 3x, and our b, which is 5z. We're good to go. So we can go back now and factor. We have 3x minus 5z and 3x plus 5z. And we're done. So we pulled out a common factor of 3z first, and then we Notice the pattern. We saw uh, it fit the form of the difference of squares, and we factored it. Let's do d. d is 2x to the fourth minus 32. Hmm. Let's pull a 30. Let's pull a 2 out um, because it can. We can factor out a 2. Let's do that. That gives us x to the fourth minus 16. Well. We can easily see that 16 is something squared, right? 16 is uh, 4 squared. Wait, maybe I should do parenthesis squared. We have minus. What do we have squared here on the left, though? So x to the fourth, can we rewrite that as something squared? We can. Because if we have x to the squared, quantity squared, we multiply the two exponents and get 4. So there we go. So our a, our a then, is x squared, and our b is 4. And we can go ahead and factor. So we have x squared minus 4. And x squared plus 4. Are we done? It kind of looks like we are. But right here, what's that? Looks like another difference of squared squares, right? Because uh, we could say x squared minus 4. Um, that looks like x for an a and 2 for b because we have a squared there and minus squared so we could factor that we can factor x squared minus 4 into something even smaller so we have 2 x squared minus 4 is going to be x minus 2 x plus 2 and then we bring down the x squared plus 4 and now we're done 
So that's a little more complicated, but that's kind of fun, right? Kind of cool. This is our last one, 81x to the fourth minus one. Hmm. 81x to the fourth. Can we make this look like something squared? Squared minus something squared. Well, the one is easy because it's just one, because one squared is one. So that's easy. We found B. How about 81x to the fourth? Because you're probably thinking from the last example. Yeah, that's just 9x squared. Because 9 squared is 81. x squared squared is x to the fourth. Perfect. There's our A. So we can factor this into 9x squared minus 1 and 9x squared plus 1. And again, we look at this and we're like, hey, 9x squared minus 1, that kind of looks like we can make that into a difference of squares again because we could do... If we want to find a, we could say 3x is the a, um, because 3x squared is 9x squared. 3x quantity squared is equal to 9x squared. And what about b? Um, again, just 1. So we can keep factoring again. We can say this is the same thing. Is, so 9x squared minus 1 becomes 3x minus 1 times 3x plus 1. And our 9x squared plus 1 keeps coming down. We just bring it down. That's it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.